a bright fireball streaking across the night sky. So it dazzled Central Texas residents whose home security cameras, there you wow. go, you see it right there. <laughs> David said, wow, yeah, <laughs> captured the rare sighting last night. A lot of people had that reaction. So we wanted to learn more about yesterday's sighting. We invited Robert Lunsford with the American Meteor Society to join us this afternoon. Robert, thanks for your time. Let's ask, first of all, what everyone is thinking. How big do you think that object that we saw from Central Texas last night was? Due to the extreme brightness of this object, I would estimate it's the size of a small car, which is pretty big when you consider most meteors are only the size of uh, small uh, grains of sand up, up to pebble size. So it was definitely significant. And Robert, how often does this happen across the U.S.? We have fireball reports every night, but uh, most of those are just uh, this, the, the brightness of Venus or slightly, slightly brighter. Uh, for something to exceed the brightness of the full moon, that, that's pretty rare. And in fact, we've had two of those in the last few nights uh, on Friday night. We've also had one uh, up in Indiana. Incredible. I just can't stop looking at that video. So I'm thinking back, Robert, to the 2013, I believe it was, in Russia, that meteorite that was about 66 feet across. It actually made it through the atmosphere and hit the ground, causing a lot of injuries. What are the odds that one of these days, one of these over Texas, for instance, might be big enough to not completely burn up and actually make a small impact on the ground? Um, the odds are small. And we need to remember the uh, event in Russia was caused by the sonic boom that blew out the, the windows that all these kids were looking out at, at the fireball. So uh, the actual uh, meteor in Russia landed in a pond, a frozen pond. So, uh, but, but still, it, what we really need to worry about is, is the debris uh, that, that ends up on the earth. And in almost all cases, uh, it has to travel through 100 miles of atmosphere, and by the time it reaches the ground, we're talk talking about very small uh, uh, bits of uh, iron and stone. Well, fortunately, we haven't had any reports of anything making it to the ground. Robert Lunsford, thank you for your expertise. Robert with the American Meteor Society. I'd like to have lunch with you sometime. I think you know a lot <laughs> of cool facts that I should absorb. <laughs> My pleasure. Okay, take care.